All right, this is College Math Lesson 1.2, Venn Diagrams. And our objective in this lesson is to be able to draw a Venn diagram with two circles showing the relationship between a pair of sets. So let's start with some vocabulary. All right, first we have a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is a picture that uses circles within a rectangle to show relationships between two or more sets. So we're going to start by drawing a rectangle, and then we draw circles inside that rectangle and that represent different sets. And the way that those circles intersect one another is going to show the relationships between those sets. Uh, for example, uh, a subset. So a, a set A is a subset of set B if every member of set A is also a member of set B. So you can see in the Venn diagram that we've drawn here, the circle representing set A is completely inside the circle representing set B. So set A is a subset of set B. So for example, let's say that A represents the set of all apples and set B represents the set of all fruit. Uh, there are no apples that are not also fruits. And so set A is, is a subset of set B. So we're gonna draw that circle completely inside that set B, which means that if, a, if something is a member of set A, if something is an apple, then it's also a member of set B, it's also a fruit. All right, next we have disjoint sets. So two sets are disjoint if they have no members in common. So this is completely the opposite of the, of the previous example. Um, here we have uh, set A and set B, the circle representing set A and the circle representing set B don't touch one another at all, um, which indicates that they don't have any members in common. So if set A represents the set of all apples again, Let's let set B represent the set of all oranges. So there are no apples that are also oranges. And so we're going to keep those, uh, those circles separate from one another. And we're going to say that those two sets are disjoint. Finally, we have overlapping sets. So two sets are overlapping if they have at least one member in common. So with this Venn diagram here, you can see that the, the circle representing set A and the circle representing set B overlap one another. And um, so let's say that we have, let's make set A be the set of all mathematicians and set B be the set of all teachers. And there are some mathematicians who are also teachers. And so that's why those two circles are gonna overlap one another so that we can show um, those mathematicians that are also teachers. So there are four distinct regions in this Venn diagram. There's the blue region representing mathematicians who are not also teachers. There's the pink region which represents teachers who are not also mathematicians. And that purple region right in the center represents mathematicians who are also teachers. And there's a fourth region in this Venn diagram, and that is where the rectangle comes in. So inside the rectangle, but outside of both of those circles, we have a region which represents people who are neither mathematicians nor teachers. All right, in this first example, we're asked to draw a Venn diagram that shows the relationship between these two sets, the set of Grammy Award winners and the set of Oscar winners. So just for some context here, uh, if you don't know, the Grammy Awards are awards given for excellence in music, and the Oscars or the Academy Awards are awards given for excellence in making movies. So, um, we're going to start by drawing our rectangle. So let's draw a big rectangle here. And this rectangle just represents all people. Uh, 
regardless of what awards they've won. And now before we start drawing the circles that represent these two states or these two sets, we need to ask ourselves two questions. Um, first is, uh, is one of these sets a subset of the other? In other words, are all Grammy winners also Oscar winners? Or are all Oscar winners also Grammy winners? And that's clearly not the case. There are many people who have won a Grammy, but not an Oscar, and many people who have won an Oscar, but not a Grammy. So the one is not the subset of the other. The second question is, are these sets disjoint? In other words, are there are there no people who have won both a Grammy and an Oscar? And that's not true either. The, um, there is some overlap. There, there are some people who have won a, both a Grammy Award and an Oscar Award. So this is going to be an example of overlapping sets. So, um, so the way we draw overlapping sets is by drawing two circles that intersect one another, that overlap. And so let's, um, let's label this set uh, Grammy Award winners, so Grammy and we'll label this set Oscar Award winners. And now, um, let's let's put in uh, just to show you uh, what each of these regions represent. Let's put in one person. We obviously can't list all the people who have won a Grammy, all the people who have won an Oscar. Um, but let's put one person in each of these regions just to show um, what each of these regions represent. So let's start with this region here. So the region, so we're talking about just this region here that comes down to here and up to there. So in this region, uh, this is people who have won a Grammy but not an Oscar. So in this region, maybe we put uh, Beyonce. She, she has won several Grammys, uh, quite a few Grammys. Um, she has never won an Oscar. So um, the next region is going to be this region over here, people who have won an Oscar, but not a Grammy. So this might represent, this might be Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep has won, I think, three Oscars. Um, and she's been nominated for a Grammy a few times, but has never um, has never won a Grammy. And now this region in here, this football-shaped region in the middle, that's going to be people who have won both a Grammy and an Oscar. So there are a few people that uh, that have won both. Let's uh, let's go with Eminem. Eminem has won a number of Grammys for his music, and he also won an Oscar for Best Original Song for Lose Yourself from 8 Mile. All right, and then the fourth region is outside of both of these circles, and that represents people who have won neither a Grammy nor an Oscar. And there are a lot of representatives that we could put out here. Let's, let's use Mr. Farrington. Um, I have, I have not won a Grammy or an Oscar. Uh, in fact, I've never even been nominated. All right, our second example asks us to draw a Venn diagram that shows the relationship between these two sets, a set of positive numbers and a set of negative numbers. So we're gonna start with our rectangle. And then, um, and then we need to ask ourselves, first of all, is, uh, one of these a subset of the other. So are all positive numbers also negative numbers or are all negative numbers also positive numbers? Well, no, that's that's clearly not the case. Um, so next would be, are these two disjoint? Uh, is it true that there are no positive numbers that are also negative numbers? And that is true. There are no positive numbers that are also negative numbers. So, um, so these are gonna be disjoint. So we're going to draw two circles that do not touch one another. So that's how our, our Venn diagram is going to look for this one. So we can draw, we can label this one um, positive 
and we'll label this one negative. And then we can uh, we can put some representatives in here. Obviously, a positive number might be uh, one or forty-two or pi. Any number of uh, positive numbers, as long as they're positive, and then negative numbers. Uh, maybe we have negative two fifths, uh, negative two, uh, negative three point four. Anything that's a negative number is going to go over here, and there's no overlap between the two of them. Now, what happens outside of here? There's this third region, which are numbers that are neither positive nor negative, and in this case, there's only one. Zero. And so this is going to represent uh, the, uh, these two sets of positive numbers and negative numbers. All right, finally, I want to just show you one last example. This one isn't on your notes, but I wanted to show you an example of a Venn diagram representing a subset. So here, uh, as in all the other Venn diagrams, we have a rectangle. But then for this one, we have a larger circle with a smaller circle that's completely inside the other. So uh, an example for this one might be, maybe this big circle represents the set of all fish, and the smaller circle represents the set of all sharks. So of course there are fish that are not sharks, but you know that if an animal is a shark, it is also a fish. There are no sharks that are not fish, and so it's a subset. And that's how we're going to draw that Venn diagram. All right, hopefully uh, those examples give you enough to get started on your homework. If you have any questions, please let me know.